Hey folks, in this video you're going to watch me level a character all the way from 1 to 70 in only an hour and 19 minutes, but the way I accomplish this is incredibly dumb and incredibly cheesy. If you clicked on this video looking for an optimized run through an efficient leveling route, you won't find it here, but I do have multiple other videos like that. I've leveled an Alliance Druid from 10 to 70 in 4 hours, a Horde Windwalker Monk from 10 to 60 in 3 hours, and more recently I finished another 60 to 70 run on a Druid in just under 2 hours, which is a milestone I've been working towards for quite some time. These runs are the culmination of countless hours spent researching, practicing, and preparing. I've had a ton of fun putting together routes and completing these speedruns over the years, so if you have yet to watch one I'd highly encourage you to do so, as I think they're quite entertaining, biased though I may be. Now, it may seem weird for me to open this video by telling you to watch something else, but I think it's important for me to establish the things that I find enjoyable about World of Warcraft speedrunning, because the run you're about to witness is the exact opposite of what I just described. With all that being said, I think it's important for me to explain all of the key details of this run before we watch it in full. The entire thing revolves around a micro-holiday named Call of the Scarab, which Blizzard added back in Legion to commemorate the opening of Ankaraj. During the three days in which this holiday is active, many different events will appear throughout Silithus. Just outside of Ankaraj itself, you can find an NPC which offers infinitely repeatable turning quests, allowing you to contribute meat from various expansions in exchange for a small amount of experience. What this means is that by handing over millions of gold worth of meat, you're able to level a character from 1 to 70 entirely through these repeatable turn-ins. While the individual experience from one of these quests isn't very high, and this method is definitely not worth the amount it costs to buy all of the items, it is a very fast strategy to level up your characters. Once you get summoned to the quest giver, you can effectively go AFK in one spot, while an automation add-on such as Quick Quest takes care of the turn-ins. In theory, this is all you would really need to do if you wanted to level a character using this method, but I decided to take things one step further because let's face it, a run that consists entirely of my character AFK at a quest giver would be pretty boring to watch. I knew that if I was going to attempt the speedrun, I would find a way to optimize it as much as I possibly could, and in doing so, I've managed to turn this seemingly basic concept into one of the most complicated and technical speedruns I've ever pulled off. At this point, I think it's important to establish that this run requires you to either have multiple accounts or other players helping you out, at least assuming you're trying to complete it in a reasonable time. Silithus is a fairly remote zone, so without a Warlock summons directly to the quest giver, it would take you a ton of time to reach it normally. Generally speaking, I only do solo speedruns where grouping is forbidden outside of the random dungeon finder, but given how stupid this run already is, I think it would be silly to draw the line at receiving external help. For this particular run, I opted to use three additional accounts, and on two of them, I was playing a Warlock for the aforementioned summons. I decided to play a Mage on my third account, as creating a portal to Orgrimmar would allow me to quickly enable War Mode at level 20, which provides a slight boost to any experience I gain. While these extra accounts are technically all I needed to complete the run, I also asked one of my friends for help, as juggling four accounts at once can be quite difficult. Now, technically speaking, once my speedrun character has been summoned to the quest giver using these alt accounts, I could just kick back and relax for an hour as the run completes itself. However, seeing as how I already have three additional characters and one friend at my disposal, I felt this would be a wasted opportunity, so I tried to think of any method that I could possibly use to shave off time. This is where the rest of the Silithus event comes into play. More specifically, the world quests that can be found scattered across the zone. Each of these world quests grants a decent chunk of experience, and while I obviously wouldn't be able to complete them by using the speedrun character, I realized that I could finish the objectives on my other accounts and still receive group credit for the character I was leveling. In some extreme cases, I also managed to use warlock summons to teleport my character directly over to a world quest as it was being completed, only to immediately summon them back to the quest giver. This may seem simple on paper, but as you'll see within the run, it was an insanely complicated process when you're trying to save every last second. There were a few other neat tricks my friend and I figured out to earn a bit of extra experience, but I don't want to spoil the entire run before it begins. I mostly wanted to demonstrate that while this concept is extremely boring on paper, I've done my best to make it as over-the-top and entertaining as possible. That being said, it's unavoidable that there will be a few long stretches where not much is going on, but worry not, because narrator Harlden here has a ton of shit to talk about. I think that about covers things for this introduction though, so I'm gonna let the start of the run play with the real-time audio. Once things have gotten settled, I'll pop back in and begin the first of many rants. With all of that out of the way, let's get into the speedrun. And... alright, I should be almost ready to start, so just... keep an eye out. Alright, I can reach the person. 
pin the mailbox from where I'm standing. Alright, send it. And then... There we go. Bunch of this stuff. All right. Actually, let me. I want to make sure I have as much as I possibly can before I start doing the turn ins just to be safe. So I'll just pack my inventory. I have the cleft hoof meat, and it was. Yeah, it's doing the chilled meat turn ins perfectly. So let's go for one more bags full, because I know that much I'll need. And then the rest will be backups, just in case. Alright. Okay, so I've got the turn in started on that character. Okay, so, hello, I am back, future narrator Harlden here, a bit earlier than I may have made it sound when I did the introduction. And that's because upon reviewing the footage of the actual run, I realized that my in-the-moment commentary doesn't really do a great job at explaining what's happening, why I'm making every decision, basically what I normally like to do in these speedruns. Because when I'm doing a solo speedrun, I, you know, it's just me and my thoughts, right? I spend time telling stories and, you know, just rambling about stuff. But I usually spend a lot of time explaining the steps that I'm going through. But because I was doing this run in conjunction with my friend, a lot of our in-the-moment discussion was just back and forth on, like, planning. And, hey, let's do this next, let's try this thing, etc. And while that works well, you know, from a getting the run done as good as it possibly can be type of perspective, it doesn't really translate into good viewership because... Well, I don't really explain all the backstory. We spent like four hours preparing for the run, so we kind of had everything planned out, and we're more just worried about execution at that point. So I figured that a actual narration explaining all of this for the next hour and 15 minutes is how long I have to talk here, which, you know, plenty of time to talk about stuff. Uh, we're going to be, you know, explaining all the different steps in this run. Now, at the start here, one thing you'll notice is right now I am trying to drag random mobs over to my character and see if I can kill them to get experience. That doesn't work, but I'm going to attempt this for the next two minutes. Uh, but what's interesting is you'll notice in a little bit a random alliance druid runs past me. And this is surprising because that alliance druid is actually not part of, you know, either my alt accounts or one of my friends. It's just a random person who happened to stumble upon us on the PTR. And... That's another note, this run is done on the PTR. I'll explain why that's significant as we get on. But one of the other side effects is that there is supposed to be a rare mob right outside of Encourage, kind of where that druid ran past. And I was going to kill it at pretty much this point in the run early on. I do manage to kill it later on, so you will get to see what that would have been like. But the idea would have been I kill it once before war mode, and then I kill it again after war mode. I suspect that before I actually started the run, the druid killed it and I just didn't notice. It's like a, I guess, three second time loss because effectively the rare gives like, what, four turn-ins worth of experience and it takes me a few seconds to do four turn-ins because it's just infinitely going on. It doesn't really matter. But, you know, a little bit unfortunate and just kind of weird that a player happened to check this event on the PTR at exactly the time I was doing this, which I think I recorded this at like four in the morning or something, so not exactly at normal times, just weird coincidence as it so happens. Uh, but as this other stuff goes on, one of the other things I wanted to explain is kind of what we did right before the run started. So in that initial minute that I played, you'll notice that I logged into the world and then we planned it out. So I pre-dropped a warlock closet so that was already ready to go. We can send the summons. And then you can see the mailbox still right next to my character, 
One of my characters dropped that. That is Molly, the mailbox from Northrend Engineering. All of my accounts had both mailboxes. I had Molly on all three of them, and I also had Ohuna Perch, which does unfortunately share a cooldown with Caddy Stamp Whistle, so you can only have two portable mailboxes at this time in the game. But Ohuna Perch comes with the free trial, or not free trial, like free boost that you get from pre-ordering War Within because the character boost gets you to like Renown 15, which is more than enough to get it. So I was able to, on these boosted characters, get that for free, effectively. And then I pre-placed that, you know, logged in. My friend sent the summon because the way that the summoning stuff works is I needed to make sure that I clicked it as soon as I possibly could, or my friend sent the group invite, rather. Because while I was entering world, I needed to make sure that the moment that I got in, I took the group invite, and then my friend started summoning me. I would tab over, click the portal, and then tab back to my character that was actually doing the run, accept the summon, start opening the mailbox, and then I can get the rest of the stuff done. So that was like that initial minute scramble. We obviously had planned all of that before it actually started, so we were just kind of going through the motions in the actual run, but I just wanted to go back and like explain that, how that introduction stuff actually worked. Now, what you'll notice here, we are doing world quests, as I mentioned before. You can see in the like top right of the screen, just above the face cam or where it should be. Obviously, as I'm recording this, uh, I can't see it. I'm just staring at like the actual raw footage, but I believe it should be on the right side. You can see that there's three world quests, and those are the ones that we're going to be completing for this bonus experience. And the one that we're trying to do right now is to kill four Templars. And what we discovered is that if my character stands in a very specific spot, just in range of the quest giver, but on like the, I guess, western edge where the Sylphus map is, the Templar that we kill here, like, yeah, that exact spot, uh, my character is just in range to get quest credit if we kill the Templar at the easternmost spot. There's basically like a bunch of little stones that you have to interact with, and if you have the right items, it summons this Templar, and we're killing three out of four of them. That way the quest is almost done, because then the moment I switch over to War Mode, which does give bonus experience that does apply to World Quests, we can then complete it and it'll give a nice little bonus. So from here, there isn't really much that we can do. The other World Quests that you'll notice, there is a Colossus of Ashi, which we will get to, and then there's one for Silithus. Now the Silithus one, while it is showing up, we actually can't pre-complete it at this moment. It is a PvP quest, it only shows up if War Mode is on, so I think at this point in the run, my friend is actually trying to go and complete that, and then she realizes that, oh, the Silithus isn't actually available, we have to wait until War Mode gets enabled. So we were only able to pre-complete that one, and you'll also notice that all three of them are about to expire. This was actually something that my friend suggested. Initially, I was just going to do the three world quests. They give a decent amount of experience, not a ton, but I figured, okay, yeah, we wait until War Mode at the very end, do those three world quests, it gives us a nice chunk of experience. And then she thought, well, at this point, you know, we're doing this run late at night. What if we just wait until the world quest reset, do one of them at least right before they reset, and then you'll get the same exact world quest again, and you can do it a second time within the run. So that's why we're trying to line it up. I tried to start the run about 20 minutes before the world quest reset because I wanted to give us like 10 minutes to do it again. So ideally, right, I hit level 20 at 10 minutes until the reset. We switch to war mode. I get that first world quest completed with the Templars. And then we have 10 additional minutes to do it all again. Uh, like pre-set up the Sylphist, get that done. And then, you know, the reset happens and I get the bonus experience. It doesn't really work out that way, uh, partially because it took me about a minute longer than I had expected to actually hit level 20, but also there was some weird timing thing where, for whatever reason, the world quests were expiring at five minutes before the hour when war mode was on, which was just randomly faster than it was outside of war mode. I still don't know what caused that. I've never seen that happen before. It's just a weird little bug, but that meant that we just didn't have time to do the Silithist one, so... I only got a double completion on that Templar one, but you know, at least that's a nice little bonus. It doesn't amount to much. Uh, one thing that you'll notice is a lot of the extra work that we're doing here is for pennies, right? We are trying to save like 30 second increments on a run that is like an hour, 
maybe like an hour, 23, 24 minutes without all of this time save stuff. And because of all of these stupid things that we did, I managed to get the time below an hour, 20 minutes, which I guess is some milestone. If you can really call anything in this run a milestone, uh, in case it isn't obvious, I think that this entire thing is stupid. And you might be wondering if I think this is so stupid, why did I do it in the first place? And trust me, I will get to that. I want to make sure that I'm at least explaining generally what's going on, because I, I did put a lot of work into organizing this, and I think it's interesting. But one of the main things that I will be talking about as this run goes on is kind of the reason that I did this in the first place, which is pretty much to prove a point. But like I said, we'll get around to that. Uh, for now, what you can see is I am setting up a Warlock Closet, because this transition to War Mode, I did talk about this earlier, but I basically am pre-summoning my character, getting it ready, and then I'm going to put a Mage Portal down, and obviously it's to Orgrimmar, so I can go to Org. Org is one of the places you can enable War Mode. I'm going to immediately set foot there, enable War Mode, take the summon back, be right back in the quest giver, and start turning in quests again. Because the difficulty with all of these other things that we're doing to get experience is every second that I am not sitting here at this quest giver for the run, I am losing experience, right? Because this is infinite, right? As long as I sit here, it may take time to do all of these turn-ins, but this is really the fastest way that you can get experience, as dumb as it is. So anything that I do to get extra experience, be it turn on more mode, complete these quests, it either needs to be done while I am sitting at this quest giver, or I need to minimize the downtime as much as humanly possible so that I am only away for as long as it takes to get that big chunk of experience and then get right back. So, you know, however much seconds or however many seconds I would have lost having to do that other thing, I am making up for it because of that chunk. Anyways, uh, you'll see I'm about to hit level 20 right here. And, or no, it's, I think I'm about to hit level 19. And then, yeah, it was at 13 minutes, right, that I hit level 20. So you'll see me getting my portal set up on my mage. Uh, so I think this is probably a good chance to talk about, like, the general format of this video, because I've been explaining things thus far, but now that I've kind of explained at least what the next few minutes are going to be like, uh, address the elephant to the room of, this is very clearly unscripted. Duh. As I said, I need to fill an hour and 15 minutes, and I wanted the initial part of this run to be scripted, uh, or rather this video to be scripted, because I think that there was a lot of stuff that I wanted to say, that I wanted to make very clear, because, well, I do think that this is an interesting thing to watch. It's uh, a bit of a weird thing, especially if people are used to my regular speedruns, and I wanted to make it clear that, like, hey, this is a weird style of video that I'm going to do. It is a speedrun in name only, if you can really call it a speedrun. But I... You know, I wanted to clearly differentiate that this is not the norm. Uh, also, you'll notice here that I went to turn on more mode. I had to pick a specialization, so I'm feral for the rest of the run. And one thing that you may have picked up on, I, it might be hard to see with where my face cam is, is positioned, but since I'm on the PTR, I actually am getting bonus experience. So among the many different advantages of doing the run in this format, right? Uh, with, you know, it being the PTR, I'm obviously getting the fact that there's no competition, right? I have PvP enabled, and yet it's a test realm, so nobody is reasonably going to kill me. The chance that somebody would actually gank me is probably pretty low anyways, but it just adds an extra layer of security, I guess. But on top of that, the main advantages of the PTR is, one, I did say at the start of this run that it would cost millions of gold to get the meat, to actually get all this experience. And that was not an exaggeration. That was completely legit. Like if you had checked the prices very, very carefully and tried to snipe the meat at really low costs throughout the entire year or something like that, you maybe could have gotten for like a few hundred thousand gold all the meat that you need for one character or something like that. But that's unreasonable. And I think generally speaking, the cost of doing this type of run is less than just buying a boost off the store. Like, there's just absolutely no reason to do it. It's just stupid. So, really, to do this test run, this whatever you want to call it, I, it's less of a speed run, more like performance art, 
Uh, but in order to do this, I could either spend millions of gold or I could spend 25,000 gold and I could copy the character with the 25,000 gold worth of meat onto the PTR a bajillion times and then mail that over as I would anything else. And of course, that's what I did because why would I spend millions of gold for this when I could just not do that? That would be really stupid. I mean, who would actually spend millions of gold for a run like this? I just can't even imagine it. Um, so that wasn't too bad at the very least. Uh, even if it does look like there was a lot of gold being spent here, really isn't that bad. And the other main advantage, which is kind of what I was bringing up before, is in war mode, there is a faction imbalance bonus. So normally it's 10% additional experience and it can go up a little bit higher if one faction is more favored than the other. Alliance historically had this for quite a while. Now it's a little bit more balanced on live servers, at least on North America. I can't speak for Europe, but on North America, I think one faction, it actually sometimes has been on Horde, has a 15% bonus, which is very minor. But on the PTR right now, it's actually up to 25% for Horde, which is why I'm doing this run on the Horde, because I'm just getting a lot of additional experience. And that does give me a little bit of an unfair advantage compared to if I did this on live servers, but I don't really give a shit. Um, kind of goes into my point of there's just a million different unfair advantages at play here, and that's kind of what I'm going for. I'm just basically trying to do the dumbest thing imaginable to save time at all costs, whether or not it is reasonable or not. And maybe this this is probably a good time to say that. Uh, so, elephant in the room, right? This obviously is not the first time that a run like this has been done. This might be the first time you're seeing this trick. Uh, also, just, you know, real quick, you can see in the footage here, that's the rare mob that I was talking about earlier. It was up on war mode, so I am able to show it, and I was able to kill it once. But ideally, I would have been able to kill it twice, but yeah. oh well. Uh, but yeah, elephant to the room, right? This People have done this before, and I have known about tricks like this for quite a while. There are a lot of different limited time events or like holiday events that you can effectively abuse to level up really quickly. Some like more innocuous ones. This one is ridiculous, of course, but uh, stuff like Hollow's End or Lunar Festival, things like that, where you have like the elders all over the place and the pumpkin baskets and obviously going around and picking up all the pumpkin baskets and talking to all the elders. That is not like an effective way to level, but it is something that you've always been able to do. You can do that. And a lot of times what you'll see me say when I do runs during Hollow's End or during the Lunar Festival is that I don't want to interact with that stuff because I've always felt like with World of Warcraft speedrunning and with speedrunning in general, but obviously with a game like World of Warcraft, you need to have like a, a rule set, right? You need to have a consistent set of rules that everybody abides by that tries to even the playing field because there's a lot of random shit in this game that can give an unfair advantage. And for a while, early on in speedrunning, when I did my speedruns, I used the rule set on speedrun.com. And at a certain point, I stopped using speedrun.com, pretty much like around the end of Shadowlands. I stopped using speedrun.com entirely. Also, just note for this, what's going on in the speedrun here, you can see me and my friend getting that final of the four Templars for this quest. Actually, I think we already did that. Is this the final one? No, this is... We're now killing the three out of four Templars for the reset, because it had just ticked over to prepare for the end of the run when we will inevitably finish this quest. There we go, yeah. So we're getting that done here. Uh, you'll see that going on in the background. Um, but yeah, so what I was saying, I stopped using speedrun.com around the end of Shadowlands. And I have, at various points, you know, said I don't really like the way that speedrun.com manages the World of Warcraft stuff. Uh, quick note, just for anybody who doesn't know how speedrun.com works, it is a speedrunning website, but every single individual game on there is, like, separately moderated. So, 
a lot of times when people like ask me why I don't use speedrun.com and they're like, oh, but it's like a very legitimate site, right? Like it's well known as being like, you know, the the main site that people go to for speedrunning, right? And it's a bit misleading because one of the reasons why <laughs> one of the, the issues that I have with the stuff that is happening with speedrun.com and I'm trying to debate on how much detail I want to go into with that because the site itself has such good name recognition, a lot of people abuse the fact that individual communities who are individually moderated have a lot of loopholes. I guess, what's a good way to say this? It's like Discord as a platform, right? Everybody knows Discord. Discord as a platform is run by a company. Discord is a company. But the individual Discord servers that you see are run by the people who own that Discord server. And well, that's maybe not the best one-to-one -one comparison. Think of individual games that you see on speedrun.com, like, you know, Zelda or Mario or something like that. Every single individual Mario game, they all have their own rule sets. They all have their own moderators. They all have their own community. And the integrity of that speedrunning scene is determined not by speedrun.com as the website, but the people who moderate it and the people in that community who enforce those rules. And effectively, the legitimacy of a game speedrunning scene is only as strong as those people. It has nothing to do with the website itself. So with that being said, I have always had some level of issue with the way that some of the people on speedrun.com enforce the rules. And not to throw shade on a lot of those older moderators, because spoiler alert, a lot of them are gone now. Most of them are gone now. I had discussions with them when I first got into World of Warcraft speedrunning about, you know, some of my issues with the way that the rules were handled. Because the problem with a game like World of Warcraft, especially when there is no, like, test server like this, or at least, while I like to do a lot of my runs on test servers because it is a more controlled environment, it is not a normalized practice. And some stuff that I do in runs just can't be done on test servers. Random dungeons... Yeah, you got to do that on live servers, and that leads to certain variants within a run. And that is uncontrollable to a degree. And one of the issues with MMO speedruns in general is that there is going to be some variance, right? No matter what you do, no matter how much you try to do it solo with all of like, you know your preparations and stuff, you can get people interfering. What happens if you're killing a mob solo and somebody goes and snipes the last 20% of your mob? You still get credit. Technically, you got help from a third party. Does that now, you know, delegitimize your solo speedrun? And I think most people can reasonably say no, it doesn't. Uh, another quick note on the run itself. Uh, you'll notice we're now trying to kill the world boss, Colossus of Ashi. This is something that my friend realized where the health of this mob does not go away even after you drop combat. Every bit of damage that we deal to it is permanent. So even though soloing a world boss, or in this case, two manning a world boss is insane and takes a lot of time, if we just chip away at this for the remaining 40 minutes or so of the run, we will be able to get it in kill range so that I will be able to get like the last 0.1% hit on this mob to get the completion experience. That's what you'll see us doing. And in the background now, you'll see me for a while now chipping away at this mob. Also, don't judge my arcane mage gameplay. Like, I, I know it's shit. This is a boosted character that I made purely to get summoning portals and you know it i can press the buttons a little bit better than i can on warlock i do not play either a mage or a warlock in endgame stuff so i don't really know i'm probably playing like shit but you know uh but yeah so the thing about like you know solo speedruns and rule sets like that is you need a consistent way to validate like what is a real speedrun. What do we consider to be fair play for the speedruns? And I honestly think there was a good stretch where, while the moderation maybe wasn't the best, a lot of different people were active in the scene, and therefore there was kind of like a communal enforcement. And without naming names, there were a few people who tried to skirt the rules. And basically you know they tried to push the the boundaries of what was within the rule set like technically speaking this one activity that you could do um uh, here a good example that i think everybody can understand why this would be problematic uh the straw that broke the camel's back for me when i stopped participating in speedrun.com 
uh, for World of Warcraft specifically, was when somebody started submitting runs where they had a group of four players who weren't in their group, but were obviously friends with them. You could even hear them talking to the people uh, that were helping them out in Discord, or some voice chat, I assume it was Discord. But they were communicating with four other people who were following their character around and just killing mobs for them. They would tag it, and the other people would snipe it for them. And I kind of gave the earlier example, right, of if you're killing a mob solo and somebody snipes the last, like, 20% of the mob, does that count as, you know, delegitimizing your solo speedrun? And we can all agree that it doesn't. But then, you know, well, that technically means that you can't put in a rule that says, oh, hey, you can't have, you know, p other people stealing your mob tags because sometimes that just happens in an MMO then people are going to say, oh, well, there's nothing in the rules that states other people can't kill mobs that I've already tagged as long as they're not in the group with me. So then it leads to people like that who see that loophole and instead of respecting, you know, the spirit of the rules, right, and saying, hey, obviously this is meant to say try to play it solo, don't do any bullshit like having friends carry you. They're like, I'm going to push the boundaries and I'm going to say, well, technically speaking, because it doesn't say I can't do this, I'm going to have people kill it for me. And guess what? It's a time save, right? When you have four other people killing stuff for you, it's going to save you time. But that's boosting. And you'll see across tons of different videos that I post, all my different speedruns, people will say, well, I bought a boost and I, I paid like 200,000 gold and I leveled faster than you. <laughs> you must feel like such an idiot doing all this work. And yeah, I just bought a boost. And it's like, cool. <laughs> Congratulations! That's not the point, right? It, it, the entire monologue that I gave at the start, that entire, you know, rant about, I like doing this stuff in World of Warcraft speedruns, and, you know, the run that you're about to watch is not that. Uh, that is the reason why I wanted to give that monologue. Because the point of a speedrun, and the reason why I do these speedruns, is not to get the fastest possible time at all costs, you know, without any, you know, rule set or whatever. Like, it's pretty obvious to anybody watching that I do follow at least, you know, before it was a strict set of rules on speedrun.com. And since then, I have followed pretty much the exact same rules, but I have, like, made some adjustments or intentional bans on myself, even though I am technically not following a specific rule set. I have my own code, right, that I follow for these speedruns. And I've been pretty open about, like, what I think is reasonable for these runs and what I think is not. And my line that I've always drawn is, can a person reasonably do this, right? You know, obviously a lot of the consumables I use are, you know, over the top. But are these consumables that if somebody really wanted to, could they go out and farm them? Yes. You know, will it cost them a little bit of gold? Sure, right? But... Everything that I do in my runs can be replicated by anybody else. There is no like third parties that you would need to get to help you out. There is no obscenely expensive items that cost like millions of gold to get or ridiculous cost investments. Uh, pretty much 90% of the time save comes from 10% of the cost. That's something I've said a lot of times and it's true. And I've also made it very clear that the runs that I do for like my fastest runs, those ones are way over the top and I try to do very fancy stuff because people enjoy watching it. And a lot of that stuff doesn't necessarily save a lot of time, but I think it adds entertainment value. It's fun to watch me use all of these cool little gadgets and stuff to save every last possible second. That's the entire, you know, appeal of those speedruns. And that is why I do them. For like my leveling guides and stuff, I don't even take that into consideration. I do a lot of bare minimum runs. If you watch a lot of the runs that aren't like super highly publicized, a lot of the ones that I do on stream, because it kind of works well in a streaming setting where, you know, I'm more just kind of chilling, interacting with people in chat and just doing testing stuff. I use like gun shoes, goblin gliders, experience potions, basic stuff. I don't get like all the crafted gear, all the fancy potions and whatnot. I just do my route basic things because goblin gliders and gun shoes are pretty cheap and obviously xp pots which i've said before i think they're pretty easy to farm if you know how to do it which i've of course made a guide on how to do it it's not too bad and i think that that is kind of like my spirit of the rules can this be done by a reasonable person and obviously do it completely solo 
And the solo one has always been a point of contention because a lot of people will say, well, I like leveling in groups. And whenever I say like XYZ thing is good for solo leveling, like people will always ask me, is my leveling route good if you're leveling in a group? And well, is dungeon leveling better if you're leveling with like friends or something like that? And the problem with answering questions like that is, and I, I can try to test it, right? But like, if I were to try to test dungeon leveling with my friends, and I were to get like my friend Ard, who is the one helping me in this run. Well, here's the thing. My friend Ard is a mythic raider. We're both progressing on mythic for Rock in different guilds. And a lot of my other friends are mythic raiders. So if I were to ask a bunch of my friends who usually help me with stuff like this, hey, can you help me test dungeon leveling to see how fast it is for the average player? Okay. Well, then let's get in a group of five, five mythic raiders blasting through leveling dungeons. I wonder how fast that's going to be. And you know what? That might actually come close to some of my solo leveling times if I were to do that in an optimized group of five mythic raiders. But the reality is I would be willing to bet, statistically speaking, 99% of the players in this game do not have four other mythic raider friends who can blast dungeons with them. So if I were to go and say, this is how long it takes to dungeon level, it, it, there are so many variables, right? And that's why I, in my leveling runs, obviously, you know, I, I get a lot of people who are like, oh, this took me eight hours to do. A and yes, you know, I, the same thing could reasonably said, be said about like my solo times. Obviously, my solo times are going to be faster than another person's solo times if they are not super experienced. That much, I think, is a given, right? But there are less variables at play. The, the entire point of my solo speedruns is that if you put in the hours, if you practice, you can match my times. I don't think that anything I do is unreasonable. And there's been a lot of people who have gotten really close to my times. You check my Discord. A lot of people post like, I got a three hour something run, you know, after a lot of practice and stuff. And it's great. And a lot of people like doing similar runs to that format with, you know, the same consumables and stuff like that. But, I mean, even I, like, you know, I, I said the hypothetical about, like, the four Mythic Raiders thing, but I honestly don't even think I could get four of my Mythic Raider friends to help me with this. Like, it's a miracle that I managed to convince one of my friends to help me out at four in the morning to do this dumb fucking speedrun, right? Imagine trying to get three other people to do that. You know, even if I told them it was for a YouTube video, they'd just be like, man... Fucking 4 a.m. Really? You expect me to stay up till 4 a.m. to do this stupid video? Like, I I can't be fucking bothered. So even though I know people who could I could do a run with, I wouldn't even be able to convince them, right? So there's just a barrier there when you when you start introducing other players into the mix. Where not only from like a speedrunning context does it make it harder to even the playing field because how are you possibly supposed to as a solo person who doesn't have all those connections match a group leveling time right but also if i start using things like that you know little timmy playing world of warcraft with his group of friends is not going to be able to possibly match the times of a group of mythic raiders you know even if he did manage to get those four people together so it i don't know it, it just muddies the waters i guess all of that to say, right? The entire point that I'm trying to make is that I think it is important to at least establish a consistent rule set. Because the thing that I'm sure that some people are thinking to themselves, and it is a fair argument, is, well, why don't you just effectively make it separate categories? Why don't you just say, here is the solo leveling time with XYZ rules, and here's the group leveling time with these rules? And that, I think, would be the solution. And if World of Warcraft speedrunning had the type of community that, you know, a Zelda game did or Mario game did or something, you know, the, the really big ones were it's super active, you have all these different categories, I think that would be what people would come together and do. And they would say, this is the preset rules that we have for this type of leveling and whatnot. And while that is a good first step, one of the problems with this is it's not just enough to have the categories because technically speaking, World of Warcraft had those categories for a while. And one of the things that actually, in addition to the other thing that I mentioned about, you know, the guys following around that person who wasn't in a group and killing the mobs for him, 
is I managed to convince the speedrunning mods at the time to ban holiday events like Hollow's End. Uh, the big one at the time was the broomstick because now there's obviously the trading post mount that functions like the broomstick. I don't know, that that's like... That one is a little bit difficult. Do you allow that during October? I still think you wouldn't. I won't use it in my runs, personally. But before that trading post thing, the only way that you could get that instant cast mount was from the Headless Horseman daily. And it led to the situation where what some people were doing to try to get a really fast run is they were spamming the Headless Horseman daily right after they start a run. And if they got the Headless Horseman thing, because it's you can only do it once per day, so I said spamming, I more so mean they would run it immediately after creating their character. If they get the broomstick, great. They have this massive advantage that saves a lot of time throughout the run. And if they don't, they restart the run. And this only works during Hollow's End anyways, because it's a limited time thing. So not only is it a holiday specific thing that's only available in one part of the year, but it's also an RNG part of that holiday. So that would mean that if you ever wanted to match a time like that, you would need to specifically do your run during the Halloween event and then go through all those hoops to try and get the magic broom to save all of that time. That's just not fun. I don't know. Maybe it's like a little bit more entertaining to watch, but I can tell you that from a like runner's perspective, that type of stuff is just miserable. I hate having to deal with things like that. So I argued to the speedrun.com mods at the time that, hey, this is kind of against the spirit of the rules. It should be officially banned. And they did. And then when they recreated the rules for, like, later on in Shadowlands, they made a new category. They didn't copy over the changes to the rules that they had made, at my suggestions. And when I messaged them about this and said, hey, remember when we had that whole discussion about banning holiday stuff? And you guys said you thought it was a good idea, and everybody else thought it was a good idea, and it was like that for months you created this new category and you forgot to include that in there. And they just kind of brushed me off like, eh, whatever, you know, tough shit, kind of. And I get the feeling it wasn't necessarily like a malicious thing. They just didn't really care. Quite frankly, I'm like the only one who's really actively doing World of Warcraft speedruns in that context. So I don't really think they gave a shit. It was more like, hey, if you want to do that, go ahead. Like at this point, nobody else is really doing it. But it still kind of bugged me. And it opened the door for people to bend the rules even further, which they did. Uh, and that was around the time when I just said, okay, I'm just not going to use speedrun.com because at this point it's not being actively moderated. And that kind of goes towards my point of you need a community to enforce it. It's one thing to have the categories. It's one thing to have moderators who say they're upholding it. But if you don't actually have the community surrounding that speedrun, who says, hey, we're all going to come together and do our runs in this format, then it means nothing. I can keep doing my runs like that, and I'd like to think that I built up a decent community of people, you know, on my Discord and stuff, who also like the same format that I do and try to do that, as I mentioned before. But, you know, I'm only one person, and my community is not, like, large enough to meaningfully affect that, so I don't bother. And frankly, at this point, I've given up on even trying to use speedrun.com as like a platform for that because clearly they don't intend to fix it and it doesn't really matter if I post my runs on there anyways so I'm just going to do me basically is kind of what I've decided at this point and that was like a long history lesson to lead into my next point uh, something bumped my door I don't know uh which is the main reason I'm doing this, like I said before, this has been done before. And I want to be very careful because I don't want to start drama. And how do I put this? Uh, I, I kind of already know that I am a little bit just by doing this run in the first place, which is why I did this a week ago and I'm only just finishing it now. And I've spent basically the past week thinking about how I want to make this video. I the run is complete. I have the footage. How do I put this on YouTube? What format do I like approach this with? And it's pretty much entirely because of this next issue that I want to discuss. I will say real quick, uh, I can't remember if I discussed this before. What you'll see now is this is the Silithist world quest that I mentioned. And effectively what I'm going to be doing on these characters 
is we're going to be running around picking up Silithist and then leaving it on little puddles outside of the collector. And my friend and I coined it as like Silithist juggling. We would place it on the ground, then we would refresh it before it would expire because there's like a three minute or so timer from when you drop the debuff to when the Silithist puddle on the floor actually expires. And every time you pick it up and get the debuff again, it resets that timer. So if we have like five pools sitting there, we just click on it, drop it, click on it, drop it, and just keep juggling those pools, we can keep it ready. And that's how I was able to complete the world quest uh, in a really fast time. I did need to be near the Silphus turn-in thing to actually get it done, but we were able to at least get the quest done almost instantly, and I was able to be summoned back really fast right as it completed. So that made it efficient. Uh, also, one final note you'll see here, I actually forgot to refresh Draft of Ten Lands, Really stupid mistake to make. I Like, in my head, I knew I had to do it, and then I was just distracted by the other stuff, and I forgot. And it's a minor time loss. I probably lost, like, about a minute because I forgot to do that. Not the end of the world, but considering how much effort I went in to do all this other dumb crap, I was definitely frustrated at myself for forgetting that, especially because I've done it in regular speedruns before, so then, of course, to forget it again in this speedrun was like... God, how could I be so stupid? But it is what it is. Can't change it. Uh, so it is gone for like the last 10 minutes of the run or something. I don't have it, which uh, unlucky. But anyways, back to my point. So the main thing to discuss in regards to speedrun.com is that for this story, it's a bit relevant because a year ago, Somebody did a speedrun quite like this one. I'm sure a lot of people have already seen it, are already aware of it. Don't want to start drama, so I'm not going to name the person. Um, but I, I think, you know, I'm not going to act like you guys are dumb. You probably, there's a good chunk of the viewership here who probably already knows what that run is. And if you know, you know, if you want to look it up, you can look it up. I'm not going to name the person. I don't want to directly call them out. This speedrun is partially a response to them, but also more of a general response. If anything, this was both a fun opportunity to really hammer home a po the point that I've been trying to make before about rule sets being important and basically emphasizing the fun and entertainment value of speedrunning rather than getting the fastest time possible at all costs. I just figured this was the best way to do it, but also I would be lying if I said that this particular instance of effectively bending the rules to suit your own needs did not piss me off more than some of the others. And I think you'll see why as I go into it. Because somebody did a run like this a while ago. And of course, you know, I, I can't even fault people for doing this. You know, it's advertised as like, this is the world record, right? And to a certain degree, the term world record has almost lost all meaning. I still put it in my runs because for me, it is, you know, the, the format that I do out of like the people who still do the runs in my style, it is the fastest in terms of the solo leveling stuff. And I've done my due diligence. I've looked into all of the people who do runs similar to mine and there aren't any faster, right? All the ones in this format, actual solo leveling runs without grouping, you know, and that's the big one, right? I know not everybody's going to follow the exact same rule set that I do. But the main one that I care about is this is a run that is done solo. You are not receiving help from other people, either being like, you know, leveling in a group with other players or getting boosted, which is the big one to me. And there are some people who do run similar to what I do, uh, not exact, but it's still done solo. And I double check that. I have done the fastest ones for that. I am very confident in that regard. But I do understand that people are going to clickbait whatever say this is the fastest, this is the world record, that much I don't really give a shit about. And kind of to my point before about different categories and stuff, well, this is very obviously a really stupid way to level up, right? And as I said, I do not recommend people do this. You could argue that this could be considered a category. Uh, the example that I always give when I'm like talking about this uh, and whenever I was explaining this to my friends, kind of what it reminds me of is I don't know the full backstory of it, but I'm pretty sure some like 
Carl Jobs video uh, that I saw a while ago. There was like a Zelda speedrun where you basically like clip through a wall through some animation that's bugged and you walk away for six hours and come back and like you're clipped through the wall or something like that. And obviously stepping away from the game for six hours to clip through a wall to save time is a really dumb way to do a speedrun, but it's like a fun little anecdote, right? Like nobody views that Zelda speedrun as, oh, this is a stupid thing. Nobody thinks that like just because somebody can do that, they are a better player than the people who do those serious Zelda speedruns. It's just kind of a fun little speedrun category. And there are tons of meme speedrun categories out there. And I don't want to diminish the value of that. Just because something like this can be done and you can technically slap the speedrun label on it does not diminish its value as, you know, it, it technically could be considered a speedrun. I personally think it's dumb and it's not the thing that I would normally get involved in, but I get it, right? But I think that what I said before about, you know, it doesn't diminish the value of like the other speedruns is kind of an important takeaway. And it is important to establish that like, while these fun categories and alternative ways of completing games can exist, we don't try to act like that is the main way to complete a game or that by doing this, we are better than another person. Just like I've always said that if you don't want to level with my route, that doesn't make you a worse player. Like a lot of people will say, I prefer chill leveling with dungeons. I don't want to do your questing route. And you know what? That's totally fine. You don't need to enjoy leveling the same exact way that I enjoy leveling. I don't expect you to. But I'm not going to sit here and say that you are a worse player because you level in this different way than me. And I'm kind of beating around the bush here. I'm bearing the lead a little bit. But effectively, what this person did, outside of just clickbaiting a video of doing this dumb thing, which, like I said, whatever, is they effectively took over speedrun.com. And I know that I'm going to make it a little bit easier to find out the person by saying this, but I, I, like I said, I spent an entire week thinking about how to approach this, and I think this is important context. They effectively took over speedrun.com, made themselves a moderator, then completely restructured the categories on speedrun.com, and in their now role as a moderator, effectively the only person controlling the site, because... If we're being honest, the main categories after I stopped using speedrun.com kind of died out. There is still a fairly active like level 1 to 10 speedrunning scene. I know a few people who do it, uh, but all of the official like full speedrun things, which speedrun.com used to be pretty active for, have kind of since died out ever since I stopped using it towards the end of Shadowlands. So there were like one or two people who would occasionally post runs to speedrun.com in those categories, but they were all gone. And the main category on speedrun.com was now unrestricted. And this unrestricted category had no rules. It's effectively like any percent or something like that. And I can understand how some person might say, well, in a lot of games, any percent is the main category. But there are also a lot of games where any percent is not the main category, where we accept that if you completely break all of the rules and use in a lot of games exploits or glitches or something to save as much time as possible, it's just not very fun. And while any percent in terms of, you know, any percent, if you're not familiar with speedrunning lingo, in a lot of games is complete the game as fast as possible, you know, rule sets be damned, right? It's kind of what I said before, but, you know, time saves at any cost. And there are a lot of speedruns where you can beat a really long game in like minutes by effectively glitching your way to the end. And then the main category will be something like, some category, something less percent, which if it's usually like glitchless percent or something like that, where you're not allowed to use that glitch and what it effectively forces you to do is play the game the way it is intended. And I think it is fair to say that the vast majority of popular speedrunning categories in a lot of these more popular speedrunning games are ones where you are playing the game in the spirit of the original way that it was meant to be played. You're completing the game, going through all the levels, something like that. And while some of these any percent categories that are, you know, involve glitches and stuff may become popular, generally speaking, in a lot of games, it's either like a 50-50 split, or in the ones where it really breaks the game, it's kind of like a meme category. But especially in the context of World of Warcraft, where like I said, there's a million things that you could do to cheat and stuff like that and you know bend the rules i think it is patently ridiculous to say that 
you know, a no rules thing where you can do whatever you want to save time is just very blatantly not the category that people actually speedrun this game for. That's like saying that paying somebody to boost you through Brackenhide Hollow is a speedrun. It is not. We all know that as, you know, rational, logical thinking human beings, but, you know, it, it becomes harder to define when you're actually asked, like, what do we start banning as a rule set? But one thing that I think we can all agree on is that this should not be the main category. And more importantly, when you completely restructure the categories to try and promote your speedrun as the main world record on this website that, unfortunately, as I said before, it does have some good name recognition, even if the individual communities are in like privately moderated, right? Trying to take advantage of a site's brand recognition to completely readjust the categories to promote your speedrun. I mean, for starters, it's a conflict of interest, right? Because there is no moderation team there. I, it's, it is just kind of hilarious. It, and I should note, by the way, I, I did check this recently. If you go now, it has been taken down. So maybe in the months recently, the person had the good foresight to say, hey, maybe this isn't a good look. I should probably go back on this. But it was up for quite a while, enough that I, at the time when I saw that said, okay, I'm going to do this next year. Um, so yes, I have been sitting on this grudge for about a year now, uh, and I have said nothing about it. So I'd like to think I demonstrated some pretty good self-control uh, doing that because, believe me, it's been pissing me off for a while, and I'm trying to be very diplomatic in how I approach this now. Um, but this is this is something I've been wanting to talk about for quite a while. And like I said, it's one thing to try and promote it personally. When you try to effectively warp the rules in your favor, especially the irony of like, you can't even fit your run into any pre-established categories because it so blatantly breaks the rules that you need to make a new unrestricted category to be able to fit your garbage run into. Mmm! Wow! Like, that should tell you something. Maybe don't do it in the first place. But yes, that pissed me off. And it it, it is just like another straw that broke the camel's back. And look, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I could have just ignored this. I could have just sat back and said, hey, you know, I don't care. Let bygones be bygones. Do whatever the fuck you want. I'm just going to keep doing me. I could have done that. Maybe I should have done that. A few of my friends told me I should have done that. But a lot of my other friends said, fuck that shit. I'm going to help you out, which is why one of my friends, Ard, here is, is helping me out. And uh, thank you, by the way, Ard, uh, who I did say she wanted to watch this, so, you know, hope you're enjoying the ranting so far. But I do think it's important to say, and, and this is why, like I said, I don't want to start drama with this particular person. I've had people bring this up to me many times over the last year, obviously. And, you know, well, I very clearly disagree with what they did and disagree with their handling of speedrun.com in general, because while the site was already kind of a fucking mess, it's even more of a fucking mess now. I don't necessarily want this to be purely about them. Because, you know, that person who had the people follow them around and kill mobs for them, it was a different person. And there have been some other people who are more established, or in the past were more established in the WoW speedrunning scene, uh, who did other dumb, semi-shady shit. When I say shady, I more mean, like... It, breaking the rules, not like anything bad as like a human being morally or whatever, but like shady in terms of speed running rule breaking. Uh did shit like that that rubbed me the wrong way early into when I did West speed running. And there's been a lot of stuff like that. And the more problematic thing for me and the, the thing that I more want to talk about and why I thought it was important to do this run and make this video is more just to deal with the average person who asks me questions about this stuff, who asks me, you know, why don't you do X, Y, Z thing in your speedruns? Why don't you try to use this time save or do grouping or like, you know, the people who bring this run up? And 
and by this run, I mean the, the run that somebody did a year ago, who bring it up and say, well, did you see that this person did this? Have you considered doing that too? And there are like many different things that I am aware of that I could do. You know, obviously the warlock summoning here that you see, this is just one of many things that I could be doing to save time in my runs. It would require grouping, which would break the spirit of the rules. But you could argue, oh, well, it's only to minimize travel time. But every single little thing that you do that, that you know, effectively makes the run not really repeatable for the average person just makes it less fun for me personally. And I know this may sound crazy, but like at the end of the day, I'm doing this because I think it's fun or doing the speed runs, the normal speed runs, the ones that I talked about at the start of this video. I do those because I think they're fun. And I'd be lying if I said that when shit like this happens, when I have to hear all of this crap about like, you know, some person used an exploit and like, why don't you do that too? And stuff like, I wish I could be the bigger person. And I wish I could say that it did not bother me at all. And that I'm able to just continue entirely enjoying doing my speedruns with no interruption, uh, without like worrying about what somebody else is doing. I, I wish it was that easy, but it does bother me. It does. And I'm I, going forward, I'm still, I'm not going to change anything. I'm going to continue doing my speedruns the same way I've always done them. I'm going to continue following my own personal rule set. And if I make any changes, I usually put it up to a poll. You know, sometimes if there's like a limited time buff, like Winds of Wisdom, when that came out, the 50% buff, I put up a poll. I asked my viewers, do you want to see runs with or without Winds of Wisdom? Winds of Wisdom overwhelmingly won. People wanted to see me do runs with that. I said, okay, I did runs with that buff because I want to do what people enjoy watching. I want to do what I personally enjoy running. And that's not going to change. But I did think that at least making this video and, you know, addressing the thing that has been frustrating the hell out of me for the past however many years, finally, definitively, in a video for once, is important. I'm going to try not to talk about it from here on out. People are going to continue to do dumb shit, I'm sure. There's probably going to be a million different little exploits in the War Within that people are going to use to get really fast times, and I'm going to ignore that, and I'm going to keep doing runs in my format. But I did think it was important to address it once. And if this does lead to drama with some of the people who I loosely referred to, I'm going to try to bury my head in the sand and ignore it. But like, I, I do understand that, like, by bringing it up, I have kind of brought that upon myself and, you know, whatever. Deal with it I have, if I have to. Um, but yeah, wanted to at least, uh, at least address that. Long discussion. Uh, what time are we at in the video at this point? Uh, just past the one hour mark. Whew. Uh, so fun, fun story now, you know, uh, we'll, we'll get to the end. We're about like 15 minutes away from when, uh, real time Harlden will pick up and, you know, I'll be discussing, you know, what I'm actually doing because me and my friend are going back and forth trying to figure out all the summon stuff. You can see me setting it up in the background with some of the selfish flipping and whatnot. Um, so maybe I should address the real elephant in the room, namely that, uh, Base cam. Hey, you know, I I haven't really drawn attention to it. Uh, that was kind of like a spur of the moment decision of I just kind of felt like it. It was one of those. I recently got 30k subs, which is pretty cool. Uh, been heading there for a little while, but it's it's one of those things where if you asked me like a year ago, do I think I'm gonna get 30k subs? Probably not this this soon. So definitely happy about that. Thank you for subscribing. If you have not yet subscribed, then you know maybe do that. You can catch more videos like this. But it was never an official subscriber goal of like, hey, face cam, I've always said I'm going to do it when I feel like it. But since I didn't have any real subscriber goal for 30k and I didn't really do anything for 20k either, I, I kind of hate subscriber goals. I've set like a few meme ones. Like I think I said I'll do a Mechanome speedrun because I've never done that. Uh, some number. There's somebody on my Discord's keeping track of it, I know. And I said I would do like a herbalism mining speedrun. Or like I, I only level through that like double agent shit at some ridiculous number. And I kind of jokingly said that and people would like ask for it. And I'm like, you know, whatever. If you really want me to do this at this ridiculous number of subscribers, I will do it. Um, and it felt right. And um, 
I don't know. I figured this was just kind of like a fun experimental type of video anyway. I don't normally do stuff like this. Uh, real quick, you'll notice big censored thing on screen. That's Discord. Uh, this is, I think I mentioned earlier the thing about Quick Quest. Uh, what, one of the problems is I actually recorded for 30 minutes and then I realized I fucked up some stuff and I had to re-record this entire section. So if you notice sometimes where I'm like, I can't remember if I said this, it's because I had already talked for 30 minutes and then I had to do it all again, which oh, it's it's been a lot. It is for reference eight in the morning at the time of recording this. Uh, if I look like way more disheveled than I did at like the start of this video, it's because I recorded that, you know, before Farak and all that bullshit. And now I'm like, Ugh. It, it's just, it's been a lot. I've been fucking... Th this is the last thing I'm recording, I guess, is maybe a good way to say that. I recorded that intro, I did all the editing, I did all the sound, I did all the other stuff, and now I'm literally just letting the rest of the video play, doing this narration, and I'm just going to plug this in, and it's like the last thing I could do, then I can finish this video, boom, post it, right? Everything else is finished, so it's 8 in the morning, we're almost done, thankfully. But... Uh, what you saw there is the person who I mentioned, the developer of Quick Quest, actually responded to me while I was finishing this run, and then I opened my Discord, forgot, oh shit, I'm recording my monitor, so Discord popped up there, so, you know, I have no idea if he wants his name to be shown, probably not, I assume he wants his privacy, so I just blurred it out, censored it, um, but, you know, basically... What he discussed with me, because I don't remember if I actually finished saying that earlier, is he explained the way that it works, and uh, there is like basically two different types of quest APIs in World of Warcraft. I'm not going to explain the coding stuff. If all this goes above your head, so be it. Uh, but basically, there's two different types of quests, especially with the repeatable ones. There is the quest API and the gossip API, and the gossip API is whenever... There is like in, uh, you, you know, those little dialogue options that are like, you know, stay a while and listen, that kind of thing. That's like a gossip text. So whenever an NPC has that option or anything else, like if they're a vendor or whatever, that they are using the gossip API for their quests. So if that is happening, then whenever a quest is completed, you are booted back to the main page of that vendor or that NPC that you're talking to. So in that case, Quick Quest will be able to infinitely repeat that cycle. It could turn in the quest, it gets booted back to the main page for the NPC thing, and then it can immediately access the turn in quest again and just infinitely repeat the cycle. However, if you do not have anything else like that, and it is using the quest API, then when all available quests on the NPC have been completed, the dialogue window will force close itself. Apparently that is hard coded into the game, there is no way for add-ons to get around it, so it doesn't matter what add-on you're using, Quick Quest, etc., that will always happen. He said he cannot get past it. Uh, he said, like, oh, you've discovered the spaghetti code or something like that. Uh, but the interesting thing here, because obviously this NPC, you can see every time it finishes the turn-in, there are only quests on here. There's all these different types of meat that you can turn in. There's no vendor option. There's no dialogue option. So this obviously is not using the Gossip API. So it's using the Quest API, but it is functioning like the Gossip API. Why is that? Well, that's because it is selecting Chilled Meat, which is the third option. It is completing that quest, but the thing is, I have other types of meat in my bags. You can look throughout the run whenever I have my bags open. It should be viewable in certain sections. In my bags right now, I have Cleft Hoof Meat and I have Lean Shank, in addition to all of the Chilled Meat that is sitting there. And you might remember at the start of this video, I said that when I was trying to figure it out, when I couldn't get it to work, all I knew is that for whatever reason, black magic, when I had two different types of meat, the thing worked correctly. I didn't understand why. It turns out what's happening there is whenever you do not have the required type of meat to turn in one of these quests, while it is still technically possible to click on the quest manually and the uh, basically complete button will be grayed out, you could do that. Blizzard will automatically register the moment you click on this NPC, whether you have the required items to do one of these turn-ins. So when I click on this NPC, the game automatically can tell he is able to complete the quests Chilled Meat, Raw Cleft of Meat, and Lean Shank. And those quests will be flagged as active. 
all of the other quests are effectively treated as if they are invisible. So when I click on the NPC with just one type of quest available, chilled meat, and I have no other type of meat in my inventory, it'll say, this is the one quest that is available. It'll complete that. And then it'll force close the window, which is the issue that I mentioned earlier with the quest API that you cannot get past. But if you have a second type of meat, in this case, rock left of meat, it'll when I open the page register, there are two available types of quests. So it'll complete chilled meat, and then it'll kick me back to the main landing page of that NPC to do the other quests. But it doesn't forcibly open raw cleft of meat. It just returns you to that page to make your own decisions. Effectively, what that does is it allows quick quests to treat the quest API as the gossip API. And you'll notice it is repeatedly turning in chilled meat, even though I have other types of meat available because it is just picking the first one and doing that over and over and over. Like I said, I know this is like complicated and I probably did a shit job explaining it in technical terms. I'm just trying to paraphrase it from like the way that it was described to me. Either way, I think it's really interesting because like I did this run at the start not knowing why it was working, just that it is working. And I thought it was cool that I managed to figure it out accidentally. But that is the full explanation given by the actual developer of Quick Quest, which I thought was pretty cool. So he messaged me that and I read it after the speedrun. And the whole situation of realizing that I knew the actual developer of this add-on, that was a situation I haven't encountered before. I thought it was pretty fun. Um, but anyway, closing words, because um, we're, we're nearing the end. I've kind of explained most things. Uh, with the last five minutes before we get to the part of the run that I'll play, which would be when this hits like one hour, ten minutes on the timer, uh, you'll get that. Um, I will, I'll, I'll explain the last bit of the run. Obviously, right now I'm just handing in meat, not really much to talk about. There's a lot that I could say. I think what I will say is obviously, obviously I'm a petty bitch, right? I wouldn't be doing this run if I wasn't, you know? I, I kind of gave that whole backstory before, and I did say I'm trying not to let it get to me, but like, you don't sit on a grudge for a year and not let it get to you. And like, I, you know, I, I, I know who I am, right? I get it. You know, it, it's fucking stupid that I did this in the first place, but what can I say? It pissed me off. And it, there there is a certain element of, and it's kind of like what a lot of my friends said of, you know, like... Just let it go, just ignore it, and, and going forward, I will. I kind of said that before, I am just going to keep doing me. But it would seem kind of hollow if I just condemned this style of, like, advertising, right? Of basically marketing niche speedrun categories as the only speedrun category and effectively twisting the rules in your favor is what I don't like. Uh, it's more of like the underhanded tactics, right? You know, doing different speedrun categories and whatever, that's fine. Like, the, you know, the Zelda example. But it's kind of the intentionally scummy behavior around it that pisses me off. And if a year ago I had said, ah, oh, well, you know, that guy's speedrun, like, doesn't count, right? Because, like, you know, uh, whatever, XYZ reason. I mean, it would seem bullshit, right? I get it. You know, it it seems like I would be saying... I think that, you know, my runs are valid and I'm using my own speedrun format. And technically speaking, somebody could say the same to me. Well, you're just trying to say that your runs are the fastest by using your own personal rule set. And I've kind of already explained my logic behind it. But, you know, frankly, that is a complaint that I've gotten before. And it, it's a valid one. I can understand that. So I feel that if this is something that I'm going to condemn, and if this is something that I'm going to say, I think this is shitty. You probably shouldn't do this. And I'm going to, you know, get up on my soapbox and talk about this shit. Well, if I'm going to have like a mic drop moment about this, I need a mic to drop first, I guess, if that makes sense. So, well, I do think this run is stupid and I wish I didn't have to do this dumb crap in the first place. I tried to have fun with it. Uh, I tried to make the best out of a, an annoying situation. Um, I did want to make it clear that like... I can do this dumb shit too, and I can do it better, but I don't want it. And I don't think we should be doing these dumb exploity things and like, you know, what's next? We pay somebody to boost us in Brackenhide Hollow and claim that as a speed run. It's just a never ending arms race. And at a certain point, it's like, 
if you want to get into WoW speedrunning, get into fucking WoW speedrunning. Get into what everybody considers to be actual WoW speedrunning. Don't just beat around the bush and do crap like this, right? I don't know. That That's my two cents. Uh, I just think it's important to at least address this. And I wanted to make sure that I showed, hey, I can do this too. Doesn't make it cool. But anyways, end of this run, the, the, the finale, so to speak. So what you're going to see here is in the background, I have been getting my warlocks in place. So one of my warlocks is sitting right next to this druid. And my other characters, my warlock and my mage, are by the Silithus turn-in point, and so is my friend. The Colossus of Ashi is at, I believe, 1% uh, health or something like that. And all three world quests have yet to be completed. And the reason for this is because world quest reward experience scales with your level. And effectively, since the experience that I'm gaining from all of these uh, like quests is just like scaling at a linear rate, the only thing that matters is getting as much raw experience out of the world quest as possible because the, the scaling of the world quest rewards is better than the scaling from the quest rewards, if that makes sense. So it makes the most sense for me to do all of this at level 69 when the ratio from like time spent to experience earned is the best. This is like a complicated subject that could apply to a lot of different things in WoW speedrunning. Uh, for instance, there was a time when I actually, all those like proof of strengths in Gorgrond, I waited until the absolute last second at like level 49 to do all those turn-ins back when level 50 was the cap in Chromie time. So there have been situations like that before where the way that the experience scales is weird at different levels. Generally speaking, it doesn't matter for traditional speedrunning because travel time plays a factor. So unless I can very easily teleport to a location and do all of the experience at any point within a run, you want to do things as you reach it in the speedrun in the way that is like, you know, the shortest travel time because that is still time saved. That matters for the runs, at least in the format that I use. But in this case, obviously, it doesn't matter. So all that to say, what you're seeing here is us preparing the Silphist. You can see my friend juggling the Silphist one last time. I have my lock closet down. So, you know, she stayed to help me get that. I believe, yeah, she's going to fly off now. So we have three out of four Templars killed on one of those world quests. What I want to make sure happens is the moment that this level finishes, that Templar gets killed. So then that world quest gets completed. That's right after I hit level 69. So the, we're basically right now in voice strategizing this. I send a summon to my character, I think right when I'm like at the midway point of level 68, which is, it's hard for me to see from like this angle, but I believe my character right now is at level 68 and this is where it is uh, in the run. So. I'm juggling the Silithus one last time on my mage. And then I'm going to mount up on this character right after this is done. And I'm going to fly to the gates of Ankaraj. I believe that's what I do right here. Or is it... Maybe I, I wait one more time. Yes, I'm waiting one more time. So. Lost my train of thought. Um, it, it's so hard to keep track of, like, you know, the, the details. Because all this shit blends together. Uh, but effectively, the main thing that I'm doing here is I'm trying to get a summon prepared for both me and my friend to the Silithus turn-in, which is what that lock closet is for. And once it's available, it takes three to create it. It only takes two to actually send the summons out. So I only need my warlock and my mage over there to send out the summons. Uh, so my friend is already sitting. You can actually see in the mini-map in the top right uh, when it pans to the other character, sitting at the Templar location ready. So yeah, here we go. So I'm going to send out a summon to my friend, and then immediately after, I'm going to send out a summon to my character. The summon lasts for two minutes, so we have two minutes effectively to take that summon and get teleported straight to the Silphus thing. But if I were to just take that summon on my character and not have a backup plan, then my character would be stranded out in the middle of nowhere. The Silphus quest would be complete, but I would be far away from the turn-in thing. So immediately after sending this, and then I rejuggle the Silphus to make sure it doesn't expire, 
what you're going to see is that my mage heads over to my other warlock down there. And then I'm going to create a lock closet down by the gates of Ankaraj where the summoning portal or the, the quest giver is that I need to sit there and infinitely repeat stuff at. And I'm sending my other character over there, so I'll have all three alts to create a second summoning portal in this location. That's why one of my warlocks is already here. And I think at this point I'm going to switch over to them, I believe, and start the ritual of summoning. Or uh, create a mailbox. Oh yeah, I remember, because I realized that I was about to run out of chilled meat. So I was barely short. I had almost gotten the perfect amount right at the start of the run, but it's a little bit too short. So I get that. I start the cast for Ritual of Summoning on this other Warlock, and then I'm going to use my two alts to complete it. There we go. Yeah. So I start the cast, I get that ready, and then there's like a few seconds left at this point on my friend's summon and my summon, and I'm going to then take the summon and then immediately summon my character back. And from here, we're getting back to the real-time commentary, but I will catch you again after the run has fully finished. So, you know, stay to the end. I have some bonus stuff that I think you will enjoy after all is said and done. Just watch the time, because you should be at, like, 20 seconds. 15. Kill it ASAP. And then take your summon. Alright, take the right, summon. Take You here? Yep. Yes. Good. Perfect. All right, turn ins have started again. Perfect. Now we get shawl back up to the Colossus. Yep. Verify that he's still low level, low health. Yep, he is. Do you want me to get him a little bit lower too? No, 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 no. No, he's not. I can. Rested. Yeah. I could just I, not summon my pet. I, I believe you could. I <laughs> that is a risk I don't want to take. Okay. Um. Okay. <laughs> a little army. <laughs> to see them all flying. Yeah. Honestly, I, I'm going to do so much with this in The War Within. I <laughs> I have been playing around with having multiple accounts in Classic. It is such a massive advantage. Like, I... Yeah. God, you can do so heavy, much like, insane shit. cost investment. Yeah! But I figure, you know, you know, the, the content and stuff that I can get out of it is pretty yeah. much worth it. And that well, is then, you don't have to like correct. wait for people to be online all the oh, time. Yeah. With the amount of solo shit that I do, it's yeah. definitely relevant. Yeah, I'm very close to being in range. I'm gonna do it at uh, 340k experience. And I'm at. You can put your character k. right here. You should be safe. Yeah. I wouldn't bother trying to help kill it on your mage. I would just stay on your druid in case he does the smash right away. Yeah. No, for uh, sure. That way you can, like, druid. All right, get ready. I'm about to do it. Uh... All right, taking the summon. Go, go, go. Let me tag it real quick. Never mind, I got it. Perfect. Nice. Exactly one hour, 19 minutes. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I got sub 120, which like I mean, it's whatever. It's uh, it it's sub some 10 minute thing. So yep, would have sucked yep. if it was one minute more. Uh, yeah. Blood strike dagger. 
these even if I think I have all these appearances, it doesn't matter. And this is the PTR, so that wouldn't matter anyway. Oh my god. <laughs> See, it's like this is such a stupid run. Yeah, and that's really fucking dumb. Like, it, 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 how do I describe this? It's simultaneously like even the tiny bit of optimization we did just felt sad. Yeah, like you know, we saved. I don't know, two minutes? <laughs> yeah. Sure. Uh, like, nothing that we did really mattered in the grand scheme of things, no. but a time save is a time save, so you gotta take it. <laughs> but it is so weird how this is, on one hand, the easiest speedrun I've ever done, where I spent half the run on my actual character, AFK at a vendor, but this is also one of the most stressful speedruns I've done, because the... <laughs> DJ and optimization that we did of summoning and selfish juggling and all that shit it just that is so stressful trying to get the timings <laughs> and that correct you don't have to deal with that in regular fucking speedruns and nope. I wow yeah I fucking hate warlock summon pocket stuff <laughs> so I have been trying to record this uh it, it is very difficult to get this cat <laughs> to stay still but we're going to do another bonus speed run. And this time it is going to be partially run by this crazy animal here. So yes, okay, yes. All right, here, kitty treat, kitty treat. Oh, look, there's a kitty treat over there. He doesn't, he doesn't feel like crossing the keyboard. Put the kitty treat right there. Yeah, there you go. All right, you need sufficient motivation to uh, stay focused for this long. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna name the character. Finn the cat, if I can spell correctly, or rather if Finn can spell correctly, right Finn? Got your, oh. He's like, where's my next, where's my next treat? Where is it? I don't see it. I don't see it, oh, you see? Okay, yeah, there's more treats, come on. Come on. Oh, oh. Oh, show me. Yeah, yeah, see, it's right there. It's right there. You can see it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's no, no. That's the mouse. No, it's 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 right there. It's on the keyboard. You're staring right at it. Okay, he doesn't seem to. Can I, can I angle this down a little bit more? There we go. Yeah, oh, there you go. You got it. All right. Well, Finn, Finn has created his character. And now Finn's going to enter world. All right, so we can see Finn here. He's starting, he's starting from level 10 on a warlock. So he's going to enter world here. Great job, Finn. You entered world. Congratulations. Major milestone. All right, there we go. And now see Finn, he's got his timer here. And he's going to go ahead and, you know, as we all know, yeah, no, good, yeah, good job, Finn. You started your timer. Yeah, perfect. And then because, you know, Finn is, is so good at speedrunning, you know, he is just the absolute best World of Warcraft speedrunner. Yeah, there you go. Oh, oh, wow, Finn, great job. You're going to log out. That's so smart of you. And, you know, Finn, Finn, uh, He's going to go over there. Yeah, yeah, hit that level 70 boost button. And then boost this character. And uh, Finn, which which spec do you want to play? Oh, you want to play Demonology? All right, brilliant. And uh, level up. All right. There you go. Yep. And uh, it's, it's processing boost, you can see there. And would you look at that? Wow. Finn managed to hit level 70 from level 10 in only 44 seconds. Well, Finn, that's a world record. I don't think anybody's going to beat that time. That That's such a good time. Wow, you are you are just a World of Warcraft speedrunning prodigy, huh? Yeah, you are, you are just the absolute best. So, you know, you got it here first, right? My cat now officially has a World of Warcraft speed leveling world record because as we all know, right, like, there's no rules here. Who gives a shit about rules? Like, we just, as everybody in the YouTube comments have said, from day one, since I started doing speedrunning, like, ha ha ha, just use a level boost, and bam, you get a level 10 to 70 world record in, um, you know, under a minute. Good job, Finn. Good job, buddy. 
You did so good. Oh, yes, you did. Oh, great speedrunner. Good boy. All right, with all that out of the way, all joking aside, I do hope you enjoyed this video, even though the format was a little bit weird. And if you did, I would highly encourage you to subscribe if you have not done so already, and toss the video a like, as that helps other people find it as well. I will catch you in the next one. Peace.